Well, today is August 12th, 2019, Monday. <laughs> I know you guys haven't heard from me for a while. I've been all over the place. Missouri, Indiana, Illinois, oh boy, see, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida. And back to Virginia. So we've been around, we've been doing a lot of different things, some family uh, events that... Uh, impacted us and different things but now we are back and we're on the road again I'm making a few changes in my newsletter so be sure and read the third page of the newsletter this time uh, about subscribers I'm having to make some uh, needed changes there so if it doesn't make sense to you just email me and I'll explain it but uh, our newsletter today is about my video, in fact, is life is everywhere. And what am I saying? We know life is everywhere on the earth. Uh, that's quite obvious. I'm talking about life is everywhere in the universe. It, just as a, a caveat, did you know scientists used to think that ice in Antarctic ice, in fact, three miles deep had no life. <laughs> oh man, were they surprised this year. A NASA scientist went uh, to Antarctica in one of the ice caves, you know, way underneath all that ice, and uh, scraped off the outer covering of this ice that's been there for, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of years and then took a core sampler and pushed it into the ice so there would be no contamination. Took the core sample out, took it back to the lab. <laughs> what did they find? Oh man. They found bacteria, really kind of weird stuff, little bacteria that spins around in different sizes and different shapes. Also, Antarctica is one of the very few places on the planet where there are ice worms. Oh yeah, ice worms. Yuck. I, mean, <laughs> I know some of y'all are going like, oh man, I don't want to talk about ice worms. I'm sorry, ladies. Anyway, these little black ice worms live in the ice in Antarctica thousands and thousands of feet below the t surface, down there where it's cold, man. <laughs> it's cold in Antarctica. Where do they live on? They live on the tiny little bacteria that are in the ice where there's not supposed to be any life. They live on those bacteria. And, you know, like earthworms bore through the earth, they bore through the ice. Yeah, I saw it. I, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I thought, there is life. Well, this has raised a lot of questions. Most Christians are already believe that God, being the creator of the entire universe, has put life everywhere. So I'm not, especially speaking to Christians, they're, they're already aware that, that God's got life everywhere. I'm speaking to those people that are scientists by nature and if they can't see it they can't believe it that's why they're not Christians most of them because <laughs> they can't see God well God is everywhere and he's created life throughout this vast universe I mean man the universe is so enormous it is beyond the comprehension of our entire populated planet if we put all of our minds together I don't think we can even begin to comprehend what God's created well uh, I'd had some people tell me oh well you know we're the only life there is and I went really and uh, this gentleman said well yeah it's I mean I, I, just, I don't think God 
did anything else. I think he just kind of made us, and that was it. <laughs> Went. I don't know if I tell you what I thought, but anyhow, what I said was, I said, so you think that that God, His creativity and His omnipotence, He was only able to make this earth with life on it, out of all of the billions of stars and billions of planets just in our in our galaxy. There are. I forgot what the number was. It just slipped my mind. Like a billion or a hundred million galaxies that we know of, and each galaxy contains hundreds of millions of stars with billions of planets. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, he's my friend, so I listen to him. And, uh, and he listens to me, so it's, you know, reciprocal. His perception of God is very limited. Uh, if he thinks that God only made us, just this planet, and that's all there is. Oh, man. In probably the next few years anyway, I don't know, the government around the world have been trying to keep quiet the fact that we have been uh, had extraterrestrials on this planet for thousands of years. I'm not sure why, except they don't want to lose control of the population due to the 59 or 1960 Robinson report that said, oh no, if people found out that, that there was life elsewhere in the universe, uh, people would go crazy or uh, we would lose control of society, and I thought, that is so stupid. People are smart. Duh. Anybody with a brain knows that there's life throughout the universe. <laughs> Man, that guy that was the head of that panel, I think he was just scared of everything. He was, uh, well, he had the name of scientist, but... How he could call himself a scientist, I don't know. But he said that uh, in his report, because he was the one that chaired it with the people that were on the panel, that uh, if life were discovered in our solar system on a planet or an asteroid or whatever, that uh, it should not be told to the public. It should be hidden in anybody that... Uh, brought up the subject in any manner, shape, or form should be ridiculed so that people would not think that this was something that was a reality. Well, apparently, his uh, program of attack has worked in some circles because uh, when people talk about aliens and things, oh, there's always a snicker and people go, oh, oh, oh. yeah, well, yeah. Aliens are people, beings, that are not from this planet. It's pretty simple. It's uh, obvious to any thinking person that uh, God is the creator of everything. He's made other beings on other planets. There's a lot of theological things that will pop in every once in a while. But somebody asked me one time, and so I'm going to address it right now. He said, it's been years ago, uh, he said, you mean uh, you're trying to tell me that Jesus had to be born and die on millions of planets? And I said, no, that is not what I'm trying to tell you. Are you even listening? For whatever reason, Jesus did have to come into physical existence on this planet. And yes, there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. There's not just one God. Jesus is not God. Jesus is the Son of God. Any of you that can't understand that, I'm sorry for you. It's very simple. There's a Father, there's a Son, and then there's a Spirit of God that promulgates the activities that God wants done, that He takes care of those things. So anyway, but... I said, no, that's not what it means at all. I don't know. Maybe we're the only 
beings that God created that <laughs> for whatever reason, man, we messed up bad. I'm not sure. And I don't know the answer. I don't have the answers. I'm not trying to make up stuff. I just know Jesus died one time. And it was for us here on earth. Why that was, I don't know. Don't know. Don't have the answer. However, that has nothing to do with life throughout the universe. I can't even imagine some of the life forms that God's created. However, um, some scientists have suggested that intelligent life forms probably, if they were able to grow a civilization or bipedal, two feet, two legs, probably two arms, and probably have a part of their anatomy that is a brain. So probably any intelligent being is similar in form to us here on earth. Um, and there's a lot of forms of life so I'm not trying to restrict what God can create. I'm just saying this is a possibility and makes sense to have a you couldn't have a whale driving a spaceship like they did on Star Trek 3. <laughs> no, that is not possible. So anyway, that is science fiction. Uh, you have to have appendages for control and you have to be able to walk and you know there's a lot of things that most of you are probably laughing saying I know that and I'm sure you do. But anyhow, my newsletter this week is on the fact of alien life. And let me scroll down here for a second, see if what I have uh, talked about. I think I, oh, I did. I titled it What If? And then I started talking about the various aspects of uh, alien life. So here's what I want to leave you guys with. Think about what if in the next year governments release information that they have been in contact with beings from other parts of our galaxy. How will you react? What will you be thinking? Is it going to mess up your theology? No, I don't think so. Not if you truly believe that God is all-powerful that won't mess with your theology at all. Uh, will it give you a different perspective? Hopefully, it will give you a different perspective. We need to realize on our planet, we are a diverse populace. <sighs> that diversity has caused problems in the past because instead of communicating, uh, we've looked at the differences of other people instead of what do we think of alike and the differences are okay. Some of some persons in the world and groups of people think if you don't think like they do that uh, you should be killed. Well that's stupid. What is their problem? Their problem is they have such a closed view of life and some of these groups are religious by the way. They have such a closed view of life that if everything doesn't fit in the box, it's wrong. Well, that's wrong. Because God not only created the stuff that's in the box, He's created everything that we see, experience, taste, and know about, and stuff we don't even have a clue about. So as new things come about in your path life, don't judge it in a negative fashion. Assess. What's my problem with that? Why do I not want to pursue that? Why do I not like that person? Why do I not like that group? Why do I, you know, think. Think before you open your mouth. I didn't used to do that. I used to open my mouth and 
didn't think. <laughs> Made a lot of mistakes. But I've learned over the years, look and evaluate. Think about that other person as if you were them. How would you want people to respond to you? Not react, respond. React usually has a negative connotation, such as a chemical experiment with reactions. <laughs> we don't want any of that. No explosions. We want to respond. So, uh, such as somebody sends you an email and you respond, say, thank you for that email. <laughs> we want to be, we want to be intelligent about our responses. So, this week, as you go about doing whatever you do, whatever your job is, whatever your friends, acquaintances, whatever you encounter, think about, put yourself in the other person's shoes. Think about what are they thinking as they're interacting with me. Why are they trying to push this issue? Wait, wait, wait. Let's get on the other side and try to see if that's how you would be. And then you'll be able to interact with those people in a calmer, more intelligent way. Discuss things. Don't have a view that your view is right and everybody else is wrong. You're wrong. I'm telling you you're wrong. You know you're wrong inside. Nobody knows everything. Everybody knows something. When you're interacting with people, accept what they say as what they know. Hopefully those people will accept what you say as what you know. Find a common ground. Interact with people. But, well, I don't want to overuse the word love, but in a caring way. Think about how you would feel. How do you want people to respond to you? And you respond to them in kind. And if they aren't so nice, that's okay. You can be nice. Because the Bible says, when you're nice to people that treat you bad, it's like heaping coals of fire on their head. <laughs> oh, man. That's a great picture. <laughs> anyway, let me get out of here. You guys can make this week fantastic. Enjoy your family. Enjoy each other. Enjoy those you work with. If you go to church, get involved in your church. I mean, do stuff. Get Do whatever you feel you have a talent to do. If you have a business, put yourself into that business. Work it. Don't whine and cry about you don't have this and you don't have that. No, no. work your business. Focus on what you want out of life. And then pursue that. Okay. This is the Rev, the Internet Pastor. See you next time.